In the next few minutes, I'll explain the main components of the VMS modeled in Simulink. We can use this model for desktop simulations where we can, for example, reproduce diverse usage cycles and environmental conditions to evaluate the system's response to a potentially unsafe condition, for example, a temperature, voltage, or current outside the recommended limits. Let's say this battery system is part of an electric vehicle powertrain. Say the battery is 75% charged and the outside temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. In these conditions, we start driving for a while and stop and charge the battery. Finally, the battery is at rest and the balancing cycle kicks in. How do we know that during these three typical usage stages, the battery pack remains within recommended electrical and thermal limits? What if the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius instead of 15? How about if the initial state of charge is 30%? Will an aggressive drive cycle cause an under voltage situation? A model allows the vehicle designer to test all these situations in simulation without risking causing damage to the real battery. This is the BMS modeling Simulink. The battery and its management system are inside this model reference. On the top left, we define the different driving scenarios that determine the test sequence provided by the subsystem on the bottom left. The green lights at the top right indicate whether there has been a fault, for example, that any cell has reached an over-temperature condition. The system itself has a model reference representing the BMS ECU with its various monitoring and control algorithms connected to a block with a representation of the battery pack and associated circuitry and peripherals. This model contains two versions of the battery pack, a small one with just six cells connected in series and a larger one with 16 modules, each module containing the six cell series string. In all cases, we model just one parallel string. Let's start with a description of the battery pack and its peripherals. The variant subsystem on the left contains the two versions of the battery pack mentioned before, the one with six cells and the large one with 96 cells. Let's take a look at the small one first. This battery pack is modeled in Simscape, where the component color tells us its physical domain. For example, blue indicates electrical and orange indicates thermal. We can see that the six cells are connected in series and can exchange heat with one another. The thermal layout is asymmetrical, with cell number six at the bottom insulated on one side, so no heat can dissipate in that direction, and cell number one at the top exposed to the outside atmosphere and therefore getting rid of the heat by convection. This asymmetry will be responsible for a significant temperature difference among the six cells. So what makes each unit cell representative of a real-life lithium-ion chemistry, say nickel, manganese, cobalt, or NMC? Well, inside each cell, there's an equivalent circuit whose topology and parameters should give me a response equivalent to the one I would observe experimentally. The equivalent circuit components should also include temperature, SOC, and possibly aging dependencies. If you're interested in cell characterization, a detailed account on how to perform this parameter estimation on battery cells is available on our website, Searching for Battery Modeling. Next to the battery pack, there's a subsystem with a passive balancing circuitry. Commanded by the balancing logic from the BMS algorithm, these switches selectively close when their corresponding cell needs a partial discharge to lower its SOC. Maintaining the battery cell modules in balance allows me to better utilize its total storage capacity, as we will see in a few minutes. Another important element of the plant model is the set of charger and inverter contactor circuitry. Prior to connecting a battery back to a charger, it is important to pre-connect them via a resistor 
to prevent an excessively high current from rushing into the pack and potentially damage it. This pre-connection needs a special sequence that we will show when we describe the BMS algorithm. Finally, the last piece of the battery plan that we model here are the charger and the load, both simply represented here by current sources commanded to follow the charging and driving profiles from the source block at the model top level. 